Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we fix our eyes on you this morning, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Lord, where we have become distracted or caught up, Lord, in other things, Jesus, we fix the eyes of our heart on you today. You are worthy of our all, oh God. You are our help. You are our hope. Jesus, we fix our eyes on you. Thank you, Jesus. My Jesus, I love Thee, I know Thou art mine, for Thee all the follies of sin I reason. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior, art Thou. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, And I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary.
Yea, saith the Lord thy God, the weapons of thy warfare are not carnal, saith the Lord thy God, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, saith the Lord thy God. Yea, when you give a child or a lad a pocket knife, yea, you let him mess with it for a while. You get him get the feel of it, says the Lord thy God. And then you take it and you show him how to sharpen it. Yea, saith the Lord, you show him how to use it so he won't hurt himself, saith the Lord thy God. Yea, the days are coming on the earth and coming in this place, saith the Lord thy God. Yea, where I shall call rank and file, saith the Lord thy God. And yea, there are days coming when I'm going to fine-tune the weapons of your warfare, saith the Lord thy God, for the evil times times are at hand, saith the Lord thy God, and yea, I am calling the body, I am calling the church, say, to rise up, saith the Lord thy God, and stand by me, saith the Lord thy God, and I will show you how to sharpen the weapons of your warfare, how to use them properly, yea, how to use the shield of faith, how to use the sword and the word of the Spirit, saith the Lord thy God, which is twofold, saith the Lord thy God, yea, and the times are coming, I am going to call rank and file in the churches, and by my people, saith the Lord thy God, yea, to use the weapons of their warfare and know how to use them. Yea, show them to me. Give them to me, Lord, and I will give them back to you and show you how to use them, for they are mighty, saith the Lord thy God.
you know, there's a lot of weapons of the warfare that we could talk about, but I'll tell you one weapon that we have at our disposal right now, it's our worship. It's our worship. And I, and you know, this morning, I'm just so stirred by the Lord. We're singing these songs and even that, that hymn, I was just, just thinking about the power of, of, the, of the weapon of worshiping God with the people of God. You know, in the, in the Bible, there's, 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 there's scenes in Scripture where, uh, where they, there, there's a battle going on, and before the battle, do you know who they send out first? The worshipers. They send out the worshipers to honor the name of the Lord, to glorify the name of the Lord, to, to worship Him. Even, even, the, uh, even the, the time when they're walking around the, 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 the city of Jericho, you know, one time, all in silence, all in silence, all in silence. But on the last day, the last time around, you know what they do? They blast the trumpets. They blast the shofars. And then they give a great shout to the Lord. And so, you know, today, I don't know what it is you're facing, but I promise you this. Worship him, worship him, and watch the enemy be defeated. Amen. So I want to encourage us all together today. Let's just continue to lift our voices up and worship. Let's press in. Let's lean in. Let's love the Lord together. Until the storm has ceased, your voice will rise above the seas. We will not fear, you are still God. Here in the waters deep, your hand will always be beneath. We will not fear, you are still God. We lift our eyes to you.
Your faithfulness is true. We're desperate for your presence. All we need is you. Sing that again. You're everything. You are everything you've promised. Your faithfulness is true. We're desperate for want to be faithful to what I sense the Lord doing right now and it's I, I believe in if, I believe the Lord wants to touch some of your children that aren't here today and I believe there's some 
I'm thinking of Larry and Diane and some of the health concerns some of that you're facing. And Tessa, the Lord's put your children on my heart this morning, and I know you're crying out to the Lord for them. And um, and there's others. Uh, the, the scripture uh, in Isaiah 54 says, All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. If anyone stirs up strife, it's not for me. Whoever stirs up strife with you shall fall because of you. Behold, I have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and produces a weapon for its purpose. I have also created the ravager to destroy. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed, and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me. And that scripture just running through my heart, all your children shall be taught of the Lord. And I've called you guys out. If you guys wouldn't mind, would you guys come up here right now, Tessa and, and Larry and Diane? I want to pray for the health of your, your children and, and, uh, and, and some things in Tessa. And if anybody else, just sit up here right in front because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some people come pray for you guys in a second. And if anybody else today just says, man, I, I feel like I, my children need a touch of God and I, my heart's just right here today and and you want to come forward for prayer, I'm going to invite you to come stand up here this morning and we're going to gather around this group and we're going to pray for them today. So if anybody else needs prayer this morning, amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Daryl and Terry. Amen. 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 Ben, you have something just on your heart? I just uh, really bore witness with uh, that intercession that we had, Danica. There's a Psalm 139. It says, where can I go from your spirit? And I pray this uh, as a priest for children that are wandering. <laughs> if I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Father, we recognize that we think we can hide. We think we can hide, but even the darkness is light to you. And we recognize that our confidence is in our ability to formulate great prayers or to live great model lives or to do everything perfectly, but our confidence is in a finished work on Calvary's cross. Our, co our confidence is that you take promises and commitments seriously. You didn't give up on me and you won't give up on them and there's no place we can go whether they be siblings, whether they be uh, however far you might think they've gone, even the darkness is light to you, Lord. Hey, what I'm going to do right now, if, the, if, that, if that's okay, stand right here. I'm going to, just in my heart, I'm going to invite moms and dads with, with children to come up here and gather around our uh, the body. Amen. And children, I want to invite you to come up with your parents and just and just put your hand on somebody and begin to pray for them. Begin to pray for their pray for their kids. You don't know the stories, you don't know the situations, you don't know the needs, but God does. And Ben, I again bear witness with what you just prayed. It's our hope is in the finished work of Christ. Lord, that is our hope. So right now, Lord, we just intercede and we just ask you for a move of God. Lord, in the areas that are way beyond our ability, Lord, they can hide from us, but they can't hide from you. Lord, the enemy, Lord, can try to work things, Lord, where we can't see, but Lord, the enemy, oh Lord, is uh, uh, is at, at your end. Lord, we pray you put an end to the enemy's plan in every child's life right now in Jesus' name. I pray for health. I pray for strength. I pray for an impartation of life. I pray for an encounter with Jesus Christ. Lord, for each and every person represented here today, each and every young person, 
each and every older person, doesn't matter where they're at right now. Father, I pray, Lord, you to rest their attention. Lord, I pray for those this morning that are addicted to, uh, to drugs, Lord. Their addiction, Lord, has been ruling their life. I pray today, Lord, they would be set free of that addiction. Lord, those who have embraced uh, an ideology of the world and, a, and they, they've embraced an idea that, that this is the way, Father, I pray this morning, Lord, that I, that ideology would be would be taken from them and the word of God would be imparted back to them like a seed of truth and a seed of life to them, we pray. Holy Spirit, we ask you right now to move miraculously, miraculously right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, for, for Lord, for every every person here today. Lord, I even as a parent, Lord, it's so easy to look back and say, oh, if I had done this or I did this. I, it's not formulaic, Lord. It's not about what we did or didn't do. Lord, it's you that can show up today. You are able, 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 able. Give us faith. Give us faith. Give us faith. Give us hope. In Jesus' name. Right where you at, just begin to intercede right now. Jesus begin to pray right now. Jesus set our hearts to you, God. We do not look backwards, Father. We do not look at the past, God, but we, we, we walk in new freshness, God. Lord, I pray that you would come and save us, Father, from this, from this age. And Lord, we pray for those children of ours that you've entrusted to us, God. Lord, that they would come, Father. Open their eyes, oh Jesus. Open their eyes. Deliver us from this perverse generation. And not just us, God, but for our children, oh God. For our house, oh God. For this house, Father. Deliver us, God, from this generation. Right now, right where you're at, it doesn't have to be out loud so everybody can hear, but right where you're at, just name the names. Just name the names out loud. Name every name. Maybe there's some children that aren't even your children, but you're praying for because they're like your kids. I mean, they're just people you carry deep in your heart. If they're there this morning, let's stand in the gap and let's name them before the Lord and ask God to move. Holy Spirit.
I pray today, Lord, we, we lift up our children that are here this morning, Lord, the children that are in our midst right now. And Father, we pray, Holy Spirit, fall on them, visit them, meet with them, encounter them. Lord, we pray today, Lord, for, the, for our children's children. Lord, we lift up our children's children to you today. Lord, those that aren't even perhaps those that are already here for some, but for many, Lord, children's children that have not even, they're not even, they're not even here yet or even thought of yet. Father, we pray, Lord, would you move generationally in our midst? Would you move generationally? I pray testimony from even this time of prayer this morning. We look back and say, well, look at what God has done. He answered this prayer, Lord, that we'd have testimony after testimony of a move of God in our kids, in our children, and our children's children. Lord, do, do, it, do a work, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hey, quick testimonies. We're standing here. I'll just share this with you. Then I'll have you sit and Scott can come. This past Monday night in youth, we had uh, just kind of like this revival time of worship. And my whole family went uh, because I, I could somehow bring the whole family sometimes. So Victoria, my seven-year-old back there, she's... She'd join youth tomorrow if you let her. You know what I'm saying? She's just like up in the front. Um, but during that youth, we prayed for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, speak in tongues. And uh, I think probably there was like eight or nine kids that stood, stepped up there. And four of them got filled with the Spirit, spoke in tongues. And Tori was one of them. She was like right in the middle of the room. <laughs> like my, and I just want to say praise the Lord. And God's touching a lot of people. I just thought that was like, if you're hungry... Amen. If you're hungry, uh, come, and, uh, come and buy. You have no money. Come buy and eat, the Bible says. What's that? Can you all come? <laughs> Somebody else asked me, wait, how can I get out of this? You know, so, hey, God's here this morning. So who knows what the Lord even has. Amen. As you find your seat, just say hi to somebody and, and uh, find your seat. We're going to have Scott come and share the announcements. Amen. Amen. Actually, as Scott comes, can we throw up the Belgium slide? Can you put up the Belgium slide, Warren? Put up the Belgium slide. Last week we heard we had uh, our dear sister Krista who's here this morning. Krista, come on forward. And I said, we're going to pray for Krista this week. So Krista, come on forward. And uh, thank you for sharing last week, Krista. I know that's not your, uh, your favorite cup of tea is not getting in front of people and itinerate. I, how do you say that when missionaries itinerate? Talk, you know, travel and talk. Krista, come on up here, itinerant missionary. But we want to pray for you this morning. Now, what's the plan, Krista? Is that, are you? Uh, tomorrow afternoon, my parents take me to Montreal. I fly out of Montreal. I'll get to Belgium first thing Tuesday morning. I'll be there until May 22nd when I come back. So there it is. So here we are. We we're sending her out today. And uh, in, uh, in Jesus' name, amen. So Krista, stand up here and we'll gather some people around Krista right now. We're going to lay hands on her and send her out. In, uh, in Jesus' name, Krista, I want to say really from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're going out to a place where uh, you don't always get all the thanks you, you know, not that you don't do it for the thanks. But we say thank you. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for serving the Lord. Thank you on behalf of those young women who even right now are caught up in traffic, in, 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 the, in the trafficking, and they're in bondage and, and lost, and God's going to send you into their path. And uh, Lord, we send her. Lord, we send Krista, Lord, as an arrow from our midst, Lord, into that pathway. Lord, that you would um, arrest uh, the, uh, the, the vicious attack against young women in Belgium and around the world. Father, we pray that you'd use our dear sister Krista, Lord, to pull people out of the pit of sin and despair and, and, and fear. Lord, there's even, there's even parents even today somewhere in the world crying out for their children. They have no idea where they're at. And Lord, you're going to send Krista to cross paths with them, Lord, and see their, those children, those young people, those young women, Lord, brought from death to life and de delivered from that wicked, uh, the wicked trafficking industry. Father, we pray for her. You'd go with her. You'd bless her. You'd fill her with your Holy Spirit and the power of God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray that you would anoint Krista, Lord, for this journey, and she would have an interrupting ability in people's lives. When she connects her eyes to their eyes, any, a lot of people could say, how are you doing? But when she asks that question, somehow it's going to connect. And I don't mean there's anything specific about those words. But when you connect with people, uh, there, there's a connection and you have an unction of the Holy Spirit Amen. inside of you. Amen. And we want that anointing to grow and we want you to grow in confidence in hearing the Lord. You are not someone that looks to be center stage, but you are one that is uh, active. And Jesus took note of a lady that gave a couple of coins, and he takes note of your offering today in Jesus' name. Chris, I'm just going to throw this out here for you, and just a, a picture that the Lord gave me of a woman that you'll come in contact with and she'll be concerned about her sister and her sister isn't part of the situation but her sister's influential and whether you see it right away or not uh, her prayers are her her turning around and her life being turned around she's going to have a real hunger to see her sister and I just I just sense that this sister is going to be influential so I'm for what it's worth, Amen. for what it's worth, that's just a picture the Lord gave me, so keep that in your, your back pocket, and <laughs> if it comes Amen. around, go for it. Lord, we just pray for protection and health for Krista, Lord, wherever she goes, that you would just provide for her health and for her protection, Lord, for her safety, in Jesus' name. Yeah, I love the, uh, this time, Krista, is very, very uh, divine opportunities. Tomorrow to Montreal, Tuesday in Belgium. I love Larry's prayer because it's a, it's a prayer that creates in you an expectation for divine opportunity. One time when Pastor Rick was headed to Turkey, um, Pat Wilbur had a word for him about you're going to meet like a, a, what was it, like a, the, uh, like a refugee or a homeless, a homeless guy. A homeless guy was the word, and he met this re a refugee who right now lives over in, uh, across the border in Canada that we were able to, very instrumental to get him. In, he's, he was a refugee from Iran, him and his wife. So we don't know. So I would just say, say go with expectation and go with uh, real hope of what the Lord's going to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning. We've got some announcements. We've got one for uh, Ogdensburg, worship in Ogdensburg this Saturday. And uh, that is, do we have one, a slide for that? And we may not have gotten it. So anyways, what time is that? That is at 5.30. 5.30 at the home of Todd and Rochelle Amo for young adults. And Ben just goes to everything. Just, you're there. You're there. That's good. That's fine. So, yeah, regular announcements. Monday night is youth and fusion, and that's going to be 7 p.m. right at Potsdam as usual. Uh, the NISIM trip is coming up very quickly. Uh, just a couple more weeks till that. Jackie, still room for one girl and one boy. So if you are that one girl or one boy, or you know someone that might be, uh, have them get in touch with Jackie Card or uh, David Tullock, right? He's uh, maybe involved, or myself. So uh, seven brides and seven for seven sisters. We have a, a slide for that? <laughs> seven brides. Seven brides and seven brothers. Brothers, yes. not sisters. Did I say sisters? Seven brides for seven brothers. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, that's a fantastic show coming up. I can't wait to see that. We've got several people, people here in the room that are part of that. 
uh, uh, very, very good. Um, does somebody have a, an announcement for a prop, maybe? Jackie, do you have a There, there was a need. There, there was a need for prop. We'll get filled in right now. Um, so I'm helping with props for the show. The main thing that we really need that I cannot find is a table. It has to be sturdy enough because our lovely Millie, leading lady, um, stands on it and yells at all the boys. So uh, it has to be a good sturdy farmhouse table that we can put eight-ish people around and then have some dancing and potentially people being thrown at it. Um, but that's the biggest one. So if anyone has anything like that around or has a lead on one, please contact me. That'll be most helpful. Key is that it has to be sturdy. We don't want this turning into any uh, WWF uh, ring edition. Where this, yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, Sunday school is coming up. We've got uh, our course series, but we've got a special one starting March 12th. It's Jonah. We're doing uh, four weeks only, starting March 12th on Jonah. He was the one that got swallowed by the big fish, right? Yes. Scott, that's at 9 a.m. 9 a.m., right here, 9 a.m. Uh, presbytery, the, uh, take a look at the dates here. That's the 20th through 26th of April. Um, this is your last day to sign up to be a possibility for receiving presbytery. So there's a link on the um, email that you can click and, and do that. If you're not familiar with that, didn't get that, don't know how to do that, and you want presbytery, see me, I will help you do that so that you can get signed up. Good Friday service right here. April 7th, that's because we have a good, every Good Friday is the same. It's Good Friday, J dates change, but it's still Good Friday, right? Right here, seven. Uh, April 7th at CFC Madrid. And that's going to be at probably 7. Yeah, we don't know what time at. We'll get the details. And then uh, also, uh, Nate's not here, but uh, um, I'm going to pray for Turkey Trip. It's coming up. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Setting out a team. Sending out a team. Um, we've got a good team right here, though. Amen. It's good to see Ben DeShane back in yeah. the seat and up here walking around and doing great stuff. Everything's going well, healing up well. He says probably continue to pray that that, that goes that way, and, and uh, we'll go for that. <laughs> Foosball, right? Table, table top, foosball, right? And it's also good to see uh, Mark and his wife, Tuli, here. We don't usually see them, but uh, they're not new visitors, but uh, it's good to see you guys. So, And somebody that's back for just a week, Lael Card, back from college, finishing up her final semester here, and then she's on to new things. So, all right, if that is it, let's have the guys come forward for the offering. Father, we thank you for the provisions that you provide. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you would just uh, take these tithes and offerings and use them to, to your accord uh, right here in the local church in the local area. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. So my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. will see of the goodness of God who I'm gonna see of the goodness of God amen thank you 
All right, let's take a few minutes, dismiss the children to Children's Church. Get up and say hi, say goodbye to Krista, and uh, have a great time. All right, let's find our seats. Let's get back to our seats today. Praise the Lord. Krista, my wife loves you. I opened my notes for today's message, Krista. And Kayla wrote on the top of my notes, don't, pray, don't forget to pray for Krista Scott. But I beat her to it. I didn't have to see the notes to remember. So praise the Lord, I saw that. Or I remembered that. The, uh, yeah, some, uh, some good, good things are happening. If you're, if you're av available after the service today, it's always helpful uh, during CFA seasons. Uh, CFA is our homeschool academy that we run for young people, uh, but the gym gets cleared for, um, for gym class. We've, we've been running gym, so this week there will be gym class this week. So after the service today, if you could help me uh, clear some of the chairs, that would be very helpful. And then... Um, 
next week, I'm very uh, I'm excited because Pastor Daniel Paladin will be with us next week. Uh, so Pastor Daniel will be with us. Uh, so I'm excited to have him here. He'll be leading worship. I think he's uh, bringing over one of his boys to. The whole family can't come, he says, because uh, just like here, everybody gets involved in different ministries of the church and different things are happening over there. Uh, but he'll be over here next week, which is exciting. Because um, he's, you know, it's also kind of funny. I was like, oh, we should have him and Millie do us, him and Olivia do a song. Because they're both the leads in the musical. And they'll both be here next week. A little, little prep for us. We can make, I can make anything happen. Well, I say like I can. I act like I talk a big game. Daniel is pretty good with his boundaries. He very well would say, I'm not going to do that. And I would say, okay. So, uh, uh, but uh, that'll be, uh, uh, that, that will be fun to have him with us. And we're really excited about that. And excited just about just the different things going on. We started CFA on Friday. We have a very vibrant homeschool academy that meets here. That's why you see some of the numbers up, 12. Like, what's 12 for? That represents the seniors where they sit uh, during CFA. And uh, just, uh, I know Elena uh, had her speech this past week. Adriana, did you do your speech this week? So they do speeches, and there's a lot of things going on. So keep that in prayer. Um, you know, as you know, the, uh, the education of our young people is of the utmost importance, as it has been in every generation. And we really, uh, you know, whether you send your children to public school or you homeschool, we certainly have, um, and I have, you know, I homeschool my children, and we have a large homeschooling uh, group here, as parents, we're called to be heavily involved in our children's lives in that area. Uh, the, uh, the, the responsibility is ours uh, to be involved in our children's education, and uh, so we certainly um, embrace that. Hey, honey, I, I announced to everybody that I prayed for Krista without your reminder. I remembered, and I saw your reminder, so that's the first thing I saw. Uh, anyhow, but uh, yeah, so keep, continue to keep CFA in your prayer. It's, it's a really wonderful program, but it's, a, it's an opportunity for, we as, for us as a church to continue to um, stretch our hands around the next generation. As the scripture says in Psalms, it says, Lord, even till I'm old and gray, do not forsake me until I declare your power to the next generation. Amen? And as uh, we have that opportunity to gather regularly, uh, whether you have children in the home or not, you can come and uh, uh, be a part or pray for that and uh, certainly stay engaged with that. I want to take a moment before uh, uh, I dive into the scripture, I want to take a moment and pray for David Tullock. David this morning, he gets invited uh, to, to share and preach at some different churches in the area. Um, we were, and he, last week he was at Beaver Camp. He was uh, uh, serving over at Beaver Camp with Youth for Christ. And today he's over, I believe he's in South Colton today, preaching at a small church there. Um, he certainly asked for prayer this morning, and he's really excited. He said, I just want to be back at home. I want to be back at home here. And, uh, and so you guys all know David, and then, but he asked for prayer this morning. And so I just wanted to lift him up in prayer. So, Father, we just lift up David this morning, and Caitlin, as they're just, Lord, uh, preaching the gospel. Lord, in the pulpit. Lord, uh, here in the St. Lawrence County. Lord, we pray for just a move of God in that uh, congregation. Lord, I pray that you'd move and... Uh, Lord, have a significant impact in the preaching of the word. Lord, bless him, be with him. And uh, Father, we also just uh, uh, pray, Lord, for uh, 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 Lord the upcoming uh, Sunday school class, Lord, uh, that, that he's going to be leading. I just pray that would be um, fun and exciting and, uh, and full, of, uh, full of great uh, truth and growth. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, I did mention, too, about uh, uh, through Scott and I were mentioning... Um, Eric Trelease is planning on taking, I think, or at least there's a plan for three trips coming up. Bob Dale's going to take a trip, and I know Eric's going to take, I believe, two trips to Turkey over the next three or four months. Turkey, as you know, have been, has been ravaged by a terrible earthquake. 36, 37,000 people so far uh, have been, are, have been, have, have died. Um, that's like, you know, and then let alone the numbers of people that have been injured and lost their homes, the, 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 the disaster is on a, on a scale that's unfathomable for us. Um, they're going to go and just kind of, uh, we have good friends of ours that we support, Mehmet. We've sent Mehmet and uh, uh, some support. He a, 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 works in the ministry over there. Um, they're going to go over there and just kind of scout out the ground. Next month, Bill Hall and Nathan and Uriah, I think, are joining that team. So they're going to go over there and see where the needs are, and then we can send some people over there uh, more and uh, continue to meet those needs. So be keeping that in your prayer. All right, if you have your Bibles, let's open them to Mark chapter 7. 
Uh, we are, uh, for the next few weeks, we're just going to kind of have some standalone sermons, just some sharing from different scripture. And the plan is right now, now the Holy Spirit can absolutely intervene. The plan is to uh, study the book of Ephesians starting at the end of March. We've been, uh, been looking into that and uh, uh, freshly just uh, looking at the pages of Ephesians. Um, but of course, Pastor Daniel will be here next week and, and then we'll... Uh, March 13th, we'll see what happens. March 20th, we're planning on starting Ephesians. But today, I want us to land, there's a scripture that's just been, just pulsing in my heart. I want to share it with us this morning. And it's found in Mark chapter 7. And it's interesting because I feel like it's just related even to what we, uh, the, the worship time and, and uh, to what the Lord's doing. But if you have your Bibles, open them to Mark chapter 7, verse 31. This is Jesus. This is, then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed, and he said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Boy, that scripture this morning, he, for me, has just been in my heart. He has done all things well. Jesus does all things well. It says, there, it says they were astonished beyond measure. and Couldn't help but declare the truth. He has done all things well. The New Living Translation says this. It says, they were completely amazed and said again and again, Everything he does is wonderful. He even makes the deaf to hear and gives speech to those who cannot speak. You know, the work of the Lord demands a response. It demands, when you see God in action, it demands to be talking, talked about, talking about, talked about. It does. You know, I don't know if, uh, you know, if you've ever seen anybody at the, at the, at the epitome or at the, at the highest level of their practice or art. or I was thinking about this morning, I, I went and saw Michael Jordan play basketball in his, in his, uh, when he, the last year he played for the Bulls, the year they won the championship. I was up in Toronto and I, I saw a game against the Raptors. We've all heard of Michael Jordan, right? So I'm watching that game. It was, it was awesome. He had like 36 points, game-winning shot. I mean, it was like, it, it, could, it was awesome. And he was actually being covered by a guy by the Raptors by the name of Doug Christie who could really cover Michael Jordan, and he still schooled him. And boy, I wanted to tell everybody about after that game, man, I saw the best play. You know what's interesting about that day, though? Because these are the best of the best in the basketball world. I remember going away from that saying, you know who the best player on the floor was, though? The best player. You couldn't help but see him. It was a guy by the name of Dennis Rodman. I don't know if anybody knows who Dennis Rodman is. Uh, not really a guy I typically would bring into a message uh, because, uh, uh, you know, he clearly has, uh, 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 has some needs in his life. But Dennis Rodman was the, the, the most diligent player on defense and hustler, diving for the balls, you know, on the court, just giving it all for a game in front of whatever, however many thousands of people were there. And I remember going away from that game saying, man, that, that was amazing. It, was, it wasn't just seeing these guys and, because they had an aura about the fact that they were like famous. It wasn't about that. It was they were on another level of excellence. Sometimes you see excellence in places you're not expecting. I went to an Albany, uh, SUNY Albany football game one day. SUNY Albany is like a Division I AA football game in, uh, down in uh, uh, downstate. And I was there at the game. They were playing a team called, uh, was it Marshall? I think it was Marshall that day. They're playing a, a game. I, I had, um, we were there. My, my pastor knew the coach. And we're watching this game. There was a wide receiver out there in the field that day that was like, you couldn't help but say, this guy is unbelievable. I've never seen a player. He... He annihilated everybody in the field today. I didn't know who he was for the opposite team. His, his name was Randy Moss. Ended up, uh, you know, becoming one of the greatest, uh, you know, NFL wide receivers. If anybody's ever followed football at all, you'd see. 
It's when you see excellence, and I'm giving you sports examples, when you see it, it's like you can't help but say it to somebody else. Man, I saw something awesome. I saw this amazing thing. When Jesus showed up to communities, when Jesus shows up to people's lives, it demands a response. It, if Jesus shows up to your life, it demands a response. Now, what's interesting is Jesus, when he, when he has this encounter with, with, the, with the people here in the Decapolis here, he, the first thing he says is, I charge you to tell no one. Is that what he said? He says, I charge you, tell nobody about this. In fact, it says, as every time, he kept charging them again and again, don't tell everyone. And every time he's charging them, they zealously responded with, we can't help ourselves. We've got to tell people about this. I can't, I can't not, not say this, Jesus. This, is, this needs to be told. This begs to be responded to. Perhaps in your own life, there's testimonies in your life where it's like, I just got to tell somebody about this. And I would even, you know, light a fire under you and say, freshly this day, apart from even the message this morning, if there's a testimony in your life of God doing a great work, boy, oh boy, find somebody and share it with somebody. Let people know about the work of God in your life. Don't, don't keep it under a bushel. These guys couldn't keep it under a bushel. It's like a secret. It's like, I just can't wait. I just can't wait to tell. Can't wait to, to let people know. We were... Uh, we had a secret, big secret this, uh, this winter. My mother-in-law was coming up for a visit, and Kayla and I were, were really excited about it, you know? So we got, we got her all the way, I think I shared this, we got her all the way into the, into the house in the night. So in the morning, the kids were opening up this, the Christmas presents, we had an extra one there. And I was like, so excited. I was so excited, I forgot to get out my video camera and video the moment. That's what I wanted. I had all these plans. Or I'd, I was like going to video it, and it's going to be awesome. Instead, it was just like... It was just like, surprise, she's here. And I was just so excited to get this. I wanted to get the secret out. I wanted to get this moment. I wanted to share it. I wanted to share it with my kids. I, it was such a special thing. I wanted to give it. When Jesus moves in your life, he does all things well. That, that testimony is a weapon, by the way. That testimony is a weapon of our warfare that we're called to use and to give. And in fact, it was a weapon this day. And Jesus... In, he actually knew these testimonies were a weapon. And he didn't want the weapons to be unleashed before their time. That's actually why he's saying, hey, don't tell anybody. Listen, in, in, uh, in Mark chapter 1, Jesus heals the leper. And he heals the leper. And uh, remember, this is the story where the, the leper comes to Jesus and he said, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. And the Lord says, I'm willing. Be clean. And the leper is healed. And in Mark chapter 1, Jesus says to him, he says, see that you say nothing to anyone. Don't say anything to anybody, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded. Jesus points to the law. There was certain law if you're cleansed or clean from leprosy. There was a way you had to go to the priest. It was a law, legal thing that you had to do to, to, so he pronounced you to be clean and all this stuff. But verse 45 speaks about the leper. It says, but he went out and began to talk freely about it. Uh -huh. Like you can picture this guy like Jesus say, hey, listen, don't tell anybody about that. I just healed you and, you know, just, just go to all, tell the priest and keep it down. He's like, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Okay. Guys, I got to tell you this. I'm healed. I'm free. Leprosy no longer has a bond on me. No, this is no longer a part of my life. God has set some of you free and not everybody in, in your world knows that you're free. Share it. Get it out. Don't let the enemy put a, put a lid on it. By the way, the, the enemy, I'm not referring that Jesus is the enemy here. There's a reason why Jesus is saying, shh, shh, quiet. Because these three years are very important to the purposes and ministry of God. He knows that if these things begin to be, um, you know, spoken about, uh, it could perhaps... Uh, you know, start something quicker or uh, a, a flow of people that he doesn't necessarily want to happen. In fact, you know, Jesus said to Peter, he said, um, or he says to the disciples, who do people say I am? Well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're the prophet, some say this. And Jesus said, well, who do you say I am? It's a, you know, conversation. Who do you say I am? Peter goes, you're the Messiah. You're the Christ. That's who you are. And he says, blessed are you, you know, Peter, because this has not been revealed to you by man, but by the Holy Spirit, right? And it's this great moment. You know what then Jesus says? Shh, don't tell anybody. Keep it down. You know, don't, don't, don't let everybody know I'm the Messiah. 
Because if he starts letting you know, people the Messiah, number one, it could start a whole uh, 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 movement that he's trying to, like, you know, that's not necessarily time yet. It also could, could be where he gets brought before the priest, before the time. It's like this moment, Jesus is walking this through. But when you see Jesus and you see him in all your glory, you want to tell. You want to speak it out. Jesus goes to the mountain transfiguration. He's up on the mountain and it's a beautiful scripture where Peter, James, and John are there with him. And he's, they see him in all his glory and all his majesty. And he's like, wow, this is awesome. Let's build a, let's build a house. Let's build a, let's build a place here. Let's stay here. Let's build a tent. You know, let's set up some tents for Moses and Elijah this whole moment, right? And Jesus then says, no, it's time to go back down off the mountain. And they're going down off the mountain. You can just hear him. Wow, that was awesome. That was amazing. And Jesus says, hey, by the way, guys, shh, don't tell anybody. Don't say anything. It's not time yet. It's not time. It's not time. In fact, the ministry that we're reading about right now, and we'll look at it in a minute, where Jesus is healing this man in the Decapolis, they are far away from Jerusalem. Far away. Tyre and Sidon over 100 miles away from where, from where, the, you know, where you'd, see, you'd think the ministry and the, the hub of the religious activity happening around Jerusalem. They are far away. In fact, Jesus is like, he's out in the wilderness. He's out in the, in the desolate places. And he's finding people. He's finding people. And what he's saying to them every time is, shh, just don't say anything, guys. Don't say anything. Because eventually, Jesus is standing on the night he was betrayed. He gets betrayed. He's brought before the, it's a, they, they do this kangaroo court at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Caiaphas' house, the high priest, the Sanhedrin, which are the ruling, ruling individual, 70 plus guys. They're all there 3 o'clock in the morning. They're all there to, to you know, let's, we're going to find this guy guilty. Jesus isn't saying much. They're bringing false witnesses that are contradicting each other. I mean, it's just this whole mess. And then the high priest in Mark chapter 14, it says, high priest asked Jesus, are you the Messiah? Are you the Christ? And you, you know that's just dripping with, are you the Christ? I mean, it's just dripping with, you got to be kidding me, man. The son of the blessed, he said, are you the Christ? And Jesus said to him, I am. In Greek, it's the words, ego e me. I am. It's the words that, that, the, that, that are translated in the Old Testament, in the Greek, where G, the God said, tell them that ego e me sent you. So when they said to Jesus, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? He said, I am that I am. It's time. And you know what it was time for? It was time for him to do everything well. To lay his life down. To give his life. He does all things well. Certainly when the Sanhedrin hears that message of, who, of he's the Christ, uh, you know, their, their desire is, you know, it's not just going to be keep it quiet. It's going to be let's crucify this guy. Let's get rid of this. This guy is a problem. This guy's an issue. And then when he dies, they hear rumors that, you know, that there might be, you know, he, he, you know they say he's going to raise from the dead. So we've got to put some guards and we've got to put some stones up. We've got we to stop this thing from happening. You can't stop God from doing all things well. You can't stop him. You can't stop him. He is moving forward. His kingdom is advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. And sadly, I watch people where God has done things grand, great and grand in their life step back and diminish as, the, as God continues to advance on. And they say, See ya. Or another day, not for me. Man, I want to be on the front of that. I want to be, I want to, I don't want to be stepping back and saying that was nice. I want to, Lord, what, what are you going to do well today? I can't wait to see what it is. I'm excited to pray for Krista this morning and send her to Belgium and, you know, some of the prophetic words. That, that stuff excites me because that puts an expectation in my heart. Lord, you are, he is active. He hasn't just done everything well. He's doing all things well. Bible says when he made the when he made everything he said he sits back and he goes mm, it's good it's good then he makes man he makes us and he says oh, that's very good very good I'm pretty good at this stuff he says last night 
I'm, I'm just amazed at how awesome God is. Last night, first time this has ever happened for me, I got a pair of binoculars last night and I saw the Andromeda galaxy. A whole other galaxy with my binoculars. Are you kidding me? I was thinking about that in worship today. Like, God, you're amazing. Why do you care about me? Why did, what about my life matters? What about, uh, he, he's so big in his generosity and love. It can't, I'm astonished at him. I really am. That's how I live, but I, I want to live like that every day. Lord, I, I feel like I'm there today. I'm astonished at how awesome you are and that you do all things so well. This, this moment here, he even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. I told you he was in the, the region of Tyre and Sidon. That's, that's on the Mediterranean coast. I was looking at some pictures of it. It's absolutely gorgeous, you know. It's like, man, Jesus, you're really getting it. It was a thriving city in that day. Jesus shows up there, does some ministry there. He's 100 miles away from Jerusalem. Just kind of moseying into places, touching lines, right? Goes a little bit north of that side. It's about 20 miles north of, of Tyre on the, on the uh, or Tyre on the, on, the, um, on, the, on the coast there. And then it says he comes back, and he, as he comes back, he doesn't go back into the familiar towns of Gennesaret and Capernaum and even Nazareth of where he is. It says he goes farther inland, so far that he's on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And you have to look at a map to see kind of the direction he, he's traveling. He's traveling where he's not known. He's definitely traveling where he's not known, where A, he can heal people that have never seen him and met with him before. He's meeting people that have, you know, maybe they hear a little bit about him, but he's, he's not trying to... He's certainly not trying to uh, gain masses of people, though masses of people are following him. He's simply trying to affect these 12 people and, and heal people's lives. That's what he's doing. Discipling people. So he, he travels to quiet and desolate places. And there he meets this, this deaf man, and the Bible says there he had a speech impediment. And it's only that word is only used one other time in uh, that, that, that word in the Scripture. And its, its purpose is, uh, is very, it's, it's very important why that word is used in Mark chapter 7. Because Mark is referring back to a scripture in Isaiah chapter 35. Let me, let me, let's turn there if you have your Bibles. Um, and I don't know, Warren, you can travel with us there. Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah 35, starting in verse 5, it says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame men leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. That's, the, that's that, that word that we only use one other time in Scripture. It's right here in Mark chapter 7 when Jesus heals this man with a speech impediment. It is absolutely to say, this is that. This is what's happening right here, is that which Isaiah prophesied about. The rule, and that's in Isaiah 35, what this is talking about, read the whole passage. It's one of my favorite chapters in the book of Isaiah, though Isaiah is filled with great, great stuff. Isaiah 35 is pretty special. But it is, it is referring to the rule and reign of the Messiah, of, of the Messiah's reign. That's what it's referring to. And so here at this moment in, in Mark chapter 7, the rule and reign of Christ is happening. And this, this deaf man who was deaf and, and mute or had a speech impediment, probably most likely just as we know people who are, you know, who are, who are deaf. My father-in-law became deaf. He, he had, what, what disease did he, did he get? Scarlet fever? Meningitis. Meningitis when he was five years old. So up to five he was, uh, you know, hearing and speaking fine. He got meningitis and he completely lost his hearing. So he's lived for you know, 75 years uh, without, without being able to hear. But if you talk with him, you, you can actually speak with him. He speaks both English and um, Spanish. He's another person who speaks English a whole lot better than I do. Just saying. But, the, uh, but as you sit there and talk to him, you have to lean in and try to hear what he's saying because the word, he can't hear himself. He can't hear what he's saying, so it comes, it comes off a little different. In fact, some of us, if we are spiritually deaf and we try to speak the right thing, it can come off a little different. We need our spiritual ears to be open to the Lord in order to speak clearly in the things of God. And, and so, you know, the, let's take a moment right now. 
Because I know this is important for you and it's important for me and I'm going to cry right now. She was at a camp when she was a kid, Kayla was, and was convinced God was going to heal your dad. And he does all things well. And you believe that. And I believe that. And I want to say right now, God's doing some miracles. Right, honey? I mean, there's some miracles happening in my in Michaela's home in Guatemala. Praise the Lord. I can't even get into details of it. If you want to talk to us privately, we'll certainly probably bring you in and share it. But my father-in-law, what, he's, what is he, 90% blind now and deaf and he needs a touch of God, somewhere in that range? Father, I just pray for my father-in-law right now. Holy Spirit, I just ask you for a miracle in his life. Lord, I pray his ears would be unstopped. His tongue would be completely loosed. And Lord, the, the end years of his life, these, these last decades of, of his life would be spent glorifying and singing joy for the Lord. Lord, I, I pray just, I want to pray a big prayer. You are able and would you do it, please? We ask you for it. We ask you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, it got me a little, I just I had, brought me back to some conversations. Uh, back to my notes here. You know, in Isaiah chapter, in Mark chapter 7, it says when Jesus came to the town, they brought the man to Jesus. And the Bible says and they begged him, would you lay your hands on him? We've heard the rumors that you're the miracle man. You're the, you're the medicine man. You know, this is a day when the, the medical, they, they were just looking for anything, right? There was, there, would, you, would you lay your hands on him? Would you touch him? Just thinking about that. We were even doing that even earlier today. It's, it's begging God to move on the behalf of somebody else. Remember the story in scripture where there's a, the roof and the, and the men, they, they, they cut open the roof, not for them, but for their friend who they lowered down inside so Jesus could touch him. I want us to be a people, we are a people actually, but I want us to continue to be a people that intercede for others. Intercede, that stand in the gap for others to say, hey, you don't need me. You need him. Come, come with me. Let me introduce you to the one who can change your life. We, we were talking about, we had, in the back there we have, uh, um, th- I think it's three, something three. But it's about praying for three people in your life. That you could invite them to the Easter service. Invite them to a, the, the Easter. We're preparing the Easter Sunday morning service as a day of celebration. Great day to invite people to, to say, hey, I've been praying, I've been praying for you. Maybe you wouldn't tell them, you wouldn't tell them that necessarily, you could. Um, but you'd say, hey, would you come to church with me that day? What are we trying to do? We're trying to implore God on behalf of somebody else. Standing in the gap. Who is it in your life that you're standing in the gap for? This morning we, we prayed for our children. That's why even we were naming names because it's like, a, Lord, I want to stand in the gap for them. There's people that I try to stand in the gap for regularly for. Not for everybody, but what you can't do for everyone, you do for one, right? And that's what they were doing for this guy. Can't do it for everybody, but we want to do it for one. First Timothy says, um, speaking about intercession, let me read that what it says there. First Timothy chapter 2. Uh, sorry, just give me a moment while I turn there. It says this. First of all then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people. If they're in your life, consider yourself tasked with an assignment to be praying for them. Then it goes into specifics. For kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way, This is good and is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow. That's God's heart is that all would be saved. And he puts us and tasks us with the the call to intercede like these men did for for this deaf man. And then we have this whole, this whole little sequence what happens here. Listen to what it says. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears. And after spitting, touched his tongue. And looked up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, 
Ephatha, that is be open. That's, that's Aramaic, by the way. Ephatha, it's not Greek, it's Aramaic. It would have been in the, the tongue of the man himself uh, from Decapolis speaking uh, into him. Be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. This is interesting as I was studying this out, even thinking about this. The big idea of this passage is not the formula. The big idea of this passage is not like, okay, so if there's a deaf man, am I supposed to put my fingers in his ears? Am I supposed to touch his tongue? Like, what am I supposed to do? Jesus was never about formulas. You read the scripture. He did everything different. I've heard of stories of like uh, famous uh, men of God who have done like healings like I don't know if you ever heard of a man by the name of Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth, hearing crazy stories about this guy. One person, uh, you know, had like a tumor in their stomach. And they come up to Smith Wigglesworth, and you know what he did? He like hauled off and punched him in the gut. It's the craziest thing I've ever read and seen. And you know what God did? God healed the person. True story, I hear that somebody else had it sick, and some guy thought, well, if Smith punched him in the gut, I'm going to punch this guy in the gut. And guess what happened? Somebody had a pretty sore gut and perhaps a lawsuit. I don't know, depending on the time and the day. I would not. You see, God is not about establishing formulas. In fact, this scripture is pretty ambiguous. I was reading it and reading different commentaries. People, they disagree on the pronouns of this, of, of who they're talking about. Actually, I was, I was like, I had to ask Paul Brown. I was like, Dr. Brown, help me here. Who, is, who are we talking about here? Did Jesus put his fingers in his ears and touch his tongue? Or did Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears and touch his tongue? And spit, by the way, that was involved as well. So Paul was, Dr. Brown gets excited when you bring up like, like weird Greek words, the out too. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, really excited. And he goes, you know what, Ben? It's ambiguous. And it's ambiguous on, on purpose. In fact, if you read the, if you have an NIV, they make, they make a decision that, that the that Greek writers, they don't make it ambiguous. NIV, NLT, they say things like, and Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears. It just isn't that clear, guys. We don't know what happened because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's Jesus took this guy aside privately. He met with him. Either he puts his fingers in his ears or he puts his fingers in his. It doesn't matter. I, I probably think he maybe have done that because he did lay hands on him. Or, you know, we see that. But then he said, be open. Be changed. Be renewed. I think that's a cool story too because he did it privately. I can't picture Jesus coming back and saying, hey, Jesus, what'd you do? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I put my fingers in his ears and then I put my finger touches his mouth. I don't picture Jesus coming back. You know who probably gave the report? The deaf man. The man who was alone with Jesus said, I'll tell you what he did. He did this and this. Oh, that's amazing. And then he said, Ephatha. He said, be open in Aramaic. I could, I could actually read his lips. I could see the words out of it. I could see it. He looked to heaven. And I was changed. He does all things well. I want to encourage you. You know, as we, as we press into God in the season, we, this week we had a couple, couple uh, uh, Sunday night last week we had a meeting. And then Monday night we were... Uh, uh, you know, youth, we just worshiped. I shared with you just some of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It was awesome. Honestly, if I let people, we could have just gone on for a long time. But at some point, I'm like, well, that's, there's grace here. God can meet us tomorrow morning, too. Some of us need to sleep, you know. That's okay. Some people would be like, I'll stay up forever. I'm like, yeah, no, you won't. You know, at some point, you're going to be like, <clears throat> gone. But God's moving. But there's not a formula. We're not like, okay, if we do like three songs, and then we, we do this, and then we do the, then, uh, that, then God. No, it's, God moves in the hearts of people. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. We could get up here today, and I, and I, uh, I love our worship team, and I want more of that. But we could get up here today with no music equipment, none of that at all, with bad voices, and sing some songs, and meet with God. We don't, we were reading something recently, Kayla and I were reading something where somebody's talking about the early, early church and they were like, and the early church had lights and they had this and we we're like, what? Like the person was like, no, they didn't have electricity until just a couple hundred years ago. Are we kidding? Well, I mean, a hundred years ago, I didn't know. I, I didn't know when electricity was invented. <laughs> 
It wasn't 2,000 years ago, guys. <laughs> Somebody was saying, and Paul preached for 30 minutes, and he did this. Read the Bible. Paul preached so long one time, a guy fell asleep, fell off a window, and died. <laughs> That's in the book of Acts. Yeah, the, <laughs> don't get any ideas there, Scott. <laughs> I'm almost done. I promise. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, it's, it's, there's no formula to this. It's getting together with people like yourself, like us, and loving Jesus together. That's it. It's, it's, it's getting lit on fire by, by the Lord. And everybody wants to come see that. And you could say, he does all things well. All things well. Main takeaway of this passage. He does all things well. All things I won't turn to these passages. Danik, if you come, we, we could, let's worship the Lord and whatever song you feel on your heart. I want to worship here today. I was thinking of some scriptures here this morning. I mean, we could, we could, look, at the, we could look all over the Bible to, to see where he's done all things well. You could look all over the story of your life. Amen? And say, he does all things well. And we should be astonished again today. Like, wow, God, you really have. If anything today, I want to I want to shake some of you guys off those those extra things that lay on you at times. Be like, wait, why am I why am I in a bad mood today again? Oh, there's no reason. You've done all things well, Lord. You've done all things well. Philippians chapter four. It's talking about personal contentment, and it's talking about contentment. Do you know what you know what the Paul writes? He says, "I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength." And what that's referring to is a contentment in God. Not like not, not playing basketball for the Bulls, like I said earlier, right? That has nothing to do with that. It has to do with all things in my life, everything in my life, that I could say, Lord, you do all things well. My life might not be exactly where I was hoping it to be, may not be everything exactly lined up the way, but God, I can sit here today and say, you do all things well. Maybe I say that by faith, because there's some things that just haven't worked out the way I was hoping. But I'll say it in faith. You do all things well. In John chapter 14, Jesus goes through this whole thing about greater works than these you'll do. You'll do greater works. You'll do things. You'll do. It talks about the people of God and the disciples going out and doing great works for the Lord. We say amen to that. In the last verse there, it says in, in John 14, as he goes through this whole thing, he said this, he says, and I will do it. I will do it. Why? Because at the end of the day, we know God, when God uses us, we're just vessels. We're just the guys opening the, the, the roof and laying the bodies, laying the, the person down. We're the, we're the ones imploring God, Lord, meet with my friend here, please. He needs a touch of you, please, God. I don't care how you do it, just heal him. Because at the end of the day, we're going to be able to say, oh, you are so perfect and so awesome. You've done all things well. You're doing all things well. And Lord, you're going to do all things well. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. And I just want us to finish today and just, just press into worship and press into the Lord. I, we talked about this earlier. The worship's a weapon. Larry was sharing with me. He said, Ben, when I had that prophetic word this morning, I saw us together in worship. That's what I saw. And then, you know, and then he saw people then, you know, using their gifts with slingshots and this thing and that thing. Because God has gifts in the body. But it starts in worship. It starts with us together saying, Lord, you do all things well. Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Standing here. Yes, Lord. And lifted hands. Jesus. You hear me, you meet me face to face. I see your grace and I worship, I worship you.
to the Lord today and you say, God, would you just lay your hands on me, Lord? Would you just fill me today? Would you help me today? Would you cleanse me today? Would you heal me today? And you just want to press in to that today. I want to invite you forward and certainly come forward. We'll pray for you. We'll lay hands on you and believe God for breakthrough, for healing, for uh, for the needs that you're facing in your life right now, that God will meet you in awesome ways. And even this morning, um, open some deaf ears and open some uh, stop mouths in Jesus' name. I will live to love you. I will live to bring you praise. I will live as a child in all of you.
Till I see you face to face, grace amazing takes me home. I'll trust in you. You know, there's some things in Scripture that we, uh, you know, where Jesus said to the disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And we, uh, we certainly have, uh, um, we live under that charge. But I want to say this morning, Jesus charged them again and again, don't say anything. We don't live under that charge anymore. <laughs> and and uh, I think that's a pretty funny Scripture if you think about it. Those guys just absolutely disobeyed <laughs> Jesus in that. They just couldn't help it. And I want to encourage you to be freshly aware of the testimony of Christ in your life and through your words to the world around you. May God give you the words to say and just glorify the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're just going to keep an attitude of prayer. If you're receiving prayers, let's continue to minister to the Lord here. Um, I certainly want to release you if you need to go today. God bless you. We're just going to fellowship and continue to press in the Lord. God bless. <laughs>